the final testimony, the final episode. You know my MO by now, right? I'm a hands-off kind of guy. I just like to pull a few strings here and there. The strings in question being those of Sean and the President's body double in this case. You seem pretty confident of your abilities in that particular arena. Is that so weird? I'm an animal tamer, remember? And what's the wildest animal of them all? That's right, humans. Didn't take much to get those two dancing to my tune. A little truth here, a little hint of revenge there. Somebody ought to thank me. I did this world a favor. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, he's scaring me. Don't let him get under your skin, Kay. We have to stay strong. This man sowed the seeds of another's revenge in order to achieve his own. It's our duty to stop him, and we will succeed in that duty. <laughs> Why do people do bad things, huh? Don't they realize it'll just come back to bite them in the end? That was the case with Bronco, with Chairman Winner. And so you insist that you had no direct involvement in any of what occurred? What can I say? I don't like to get my hands dirty. Sure do love to watch the action unfold, though. All those idiots desperately trying to kill one another, and they don't even know I lit the fuse. I love it. Ha! <laughs> you haven't changed. All you did 12 years ago was watch, too. You're talking about the whole SS5 thing. <laughs> ah, stop it. You're poor Papa, scrabbling around for answers and finding nothing. Shucks. What do they call that again? Oh, yeah, rank incompetence. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, how dare you! Agent Lang, please. You don't know the half of it, you damned clown! Your father may not have closed out the case, nor publicly anyway, but it was thanks to his work that we're standing here right now. <laughs> Sorry to butt in, Miles, but your little pep talk isn't going to magically solve this case. Now, I know you have your theories. So what makes you think I'd let that fake president set foot on my balloon? But it's the only way he could have gotten down from the roof of that building. Hmm. Alright, let's game this one out, shall we? Suppose I took him down from the ground like you said. What's wrong with doing that? Objection. So you admit it! You did take him on your balloon! Objection. You're really obsessing over this one little detail. This isn't like you, Miles. And how do you think it went down? He held me at gunpoint and said, Show me the city at night. That's ridiculous and you know it is. Or did you really fail to think this through? Objection. You said yourself you gave him Sean's identity. Surely that was enough to win him over. Objection. Win him over? The man who shot at me? No, 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 no. Then you must have put him to sleep and carried him away like you did with me. Objection. Very well. Let us suppose that to be true for a second. The autopsy show the presence of sedatives. <laughs> no good! He's just not giving us an opening! Anyway, never mind all that. There are way more interesting things I'd rather talk about. Besides, I thought he was crushed to death by that mono monster head. No, he was crushed by something much... Oops, sorry. My bad. Sean didn't kill the president. The president was crushed by a monster. What?! <laughs> Did you really just say that? You? Oh, I get it. He's the kid who can communicate with giant beasts, right? Did he use his special powers? The only person in communion with monsters was you. Sorry, but you must have me mixed up with somebody else. No monster pals here, I'm afraid. <laughs> Why the false modesty? You're very close with at least one such creature. In fact, you can make this particular monster do exactly as you command. It was you who killed the president, Mr. Saint, and I can prove it. What? You're talking about the lion balloon? Yes, a quivering mockery of a monster filled with hot air, but a monster nonetheless. Not entirely unlike Mr. Saint himself. Sorry, you lost me. What are you trying to say exactly? You seemed very keen to stick to your story about having manipulated Sean and the President. But no matter how true you may have wanted it to be, there was nothing more than a desperate lie. Even the most skilled animal tamer can't make the dead do his bidding. And the President was dead long before he left that roof, having been killed by your balloon. 
I get it. The thing may look lighter than air, but it weighs a few hundred pounds, right? When the president attacked you from the roof, you had to think quickly in order to protect yourself. The method you chose, landing the balloon right on top of it. You didn't need to let him ride on that balloon, and he didn't need to coerce you into taking it. Because what you took away was his dead body. Objection. Wait a minute now, Miles. If what you're saying is true, the president would have been killed two nights ago. Which would mean the time of death recorded in the autopsy was wrong. It would? Wow, you're really losing your touch. Look again, it's written right there. Time of death, April 5th at approximately 11 p.m. Clear as day. Yeah! April 5th? That was yesterday, which means... Exactly. It means he died when the Taurosaur's health fell off of that roof. All right, Sean. It's time to be honest with us all. You know what's the right thing to do? You killed your daddy, didn't you? You hated him, didn't you? We get it. Who wouldn't? He just left you. What kind of a father would do that? No! That's not what happened. I already told you. I didn't know who he was until today. Oh, but you did know. Because I told you myself. Gah! Can my theory really have been so wide of the mark? I want to thank you once again, Miles. You hounded Winter and Lagarde until their crimes were finally exposed. And by ruining them both, you helped me get my revenge. Gotta love those powers of deduction. If the time of death matched up, Everything else would fit. So, could he possibly have cheated the time of death somehow? Oh, and what was the other guy's name again? Carmelo Gusto? You even ran him down for me. That was some great work you did there. Of course. Gusto. The IS-7 incident. He killed Frost and froze his body in order to conceal it. Mr. Gusto needed to freeze Mr. Frost's body in order to obscure the time of death. If they determined that the murder occurred during afternoon tea, he would have been an obvious suspect. <laughs> Bingo! <laughs> I only wish I could have been there to see his downfall too! How could you say that? He was your father! It's so, so scary. Miss the guard just keeps asking and asking about what happened that day. Where are you, Dad? When are you coming to get me? Please. I need you to come take me away. Is it because I broke my promise? Because I didn't show up in time to help you taste your work? He was no father. He left me all on, I am on my own. What kind of person would do that? We may have shared the same blood, but that's it. Father? What a joke. Just like B. Han would say. You may not want to hear this, Mr. Saint, but you share more than blood. Hate him all you like, but you're more like your father than you know. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? Fate can be strange sometimes, but this was no coincidence. You and your father were the same even in the methods you chose. You deliberately threw off the time of death, just as he did. That's right, we had a rescue him from a warehouse refrigeration unit down by the harbor. A refrigeration unit in a depot? I threw off the time of death? And how do I do that exactly? By hiding the president's body in a very specific place. You hid the body right here. Sunshine Depot! You needed to keep the body cool somewhere. And you also needed somewhere to keep Sean. <laughs> Who knew that the two were connected? You're talking about the kidnapping again. Why are we bringing that up now? Because much as you may wish we had forgotten, we know that you kept Sean in a refrigeration unit. The same refrigeration unit in which you kept the president's body. Just as your father froze the body he was trying to conceal 18 years ago. What? You're saying I'm the same as him? The same as the animal who abandoned me? A sad irony, but an undeniable one. Objection! Shut up! I'm nothing like him! I could never be like him! He's nothing to do with me, and we're nothing alike! Objection! Sorry, kiddo, but I think it's pretty clear that you and old Gusto have more than a little in common. 
You even told us you didn't like sweet stuff way back when we first met, right? Huh. <laughs> if that's not a product of your daddy issues, I don't know what is. Yeah, you. You don't understand. You may have tried to disown your father, but he lives on in everything you do. You think the same way. The act like father like son. Seriously. And you're every bit as prepared as he was to sacrifice others in order to protect yourself. Your crimes were even exposed in the same manner. You couldn't be more similar. I <laughs> or should I say... <laughs> I don't know anything about a refrigeration unit. And the kidnapping? Nothing to do with it. Objection! Nonsense! You did it so you could blackmail Judge Gabelle. We know for a fact you were involved. Objection. You're a real danger to be around, you know that, Miles. What aren't you gonna accuse me of? But it changes nothing. You still don't have any proof. Of incitement, of kidnapping, of anything. Oh wait, or are you planning on maybe fabricating some? Taking a leaf out of the old winter playbook? Never! I would never do that! I can't let myself rise to the provocation. What was the line? No matter what happens, we must find the truth? Something like that? Huh. But only when the truth suits you, huh? That's how the law keeps people down, isn't it? And why I had to get my revenge myself. <laughs> I got away with it. I got away with it all. Lagarde, winner, and now you. None of you can touch me. This, this is bad, Mr. Edgeworth. Isn't there anything we can do? Everything points to this man being our culprit. But we need evidence, even just one piece. All right, it's been fun, but it's time we brought this little show to an end, don't you think? Stick around for the main event, though, won't you? I'll even let you in for free, if you'll finally admit defeat. <laughs> Hold it! Who was that? Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Gummy! Where have you been? I've been doing my job, just like Mr. Edgeworth asked me. And Detective Gumshoe, you have anything to report? I had to look into a few things real quick, sir, about the refrigeration unit where the kid was kept. It was registered to the Berry Big Circus, just like you said. <laughs> and there it is, just in the nick of time. Excellent work, Detective. Well, Mr. Saint, <laughs> must be some kind of mistake. Why would a circus need a refrigeration unit? Hmm, a valid question, I suppose. But we're no experts on the circus trade. Perhaps we could ask your department manager for her thoughts on the matter. Well, Miss Barry? Ah! Uh, we do hire a unit to store all the food for the animals, but I don't know where it is. I leave all that to Simeon. He's so good at that kind of thing. Yeah! You fool! <laughs> Simeon, you're scaring me! Such a shame. But rushing to find a solution after the fact so often leads to mistakes. You knew that if the body was found in the unit, the suspicion would fall on you. So you panicked and moved into the grounds of the big building instead. Yeah! But you weren't counting on Sean being found in the unit when you kidnapped him. If only you'd known you were up against a great thief and an even greater detective. Is everything alright? You're looking a little pale. <laughs> Don't think you've won just yet, Miles. You're missing proof for the most important part of your little theory. I am? Perhaps you could enlighten us. You don't have any evidence that I crushed the presidential faker with that balloon. And I know you don't, because there isn't any. I'm... I'm afraid there is. What? If Mr. Saint murdered the victim as we think he did, there should be traces of your misdeed on this piece of evidence. In the hot air balloon! Analysis of the balloon basket should turn up the evidence we need. <laughs> the balloon again? You already have your bullet hole. What else do you expect to find? We, uh, expect to find plenty, actually. Isn't that right, Mr. Edgeworth? If there's truth to be found, then he'll find it. He's a hero of justice! He sure is. We'll find something for sure. 
Mr. Edgeworth has gotten out of way tighter spots than this one. What they said. We believe in you, Mazarino. And so does your pop. He's looking down on you right now, I know he is. As is one other. Just stay calm and see this through to the end, Miles Edgeworth. A perfect victory is only moments away. The president's body double was killed by the balloon. Traces of a certain substance will prove that. And you, Simeon Saint, will pay for your crimes at last. I'm looking forward to this. Time to wrap up the mysteries of past and present once and for all. Please, Mr. Edgeworth, deal the final blow to this unforgivably wicked man. This last piece of evidence will prove your guilt beyond the doubt. What should we, we expect to find on the balloon if it was used to crush the president? The bouquet of lion lilies. When Sean found the president's body, he also found a bouquet of lion lilies. Lion lilies, symbol of the connection between parent and child. A popular flower back in Shangfa. That's your proof? A bunch of flowers that will be rotting at the dump by now? A bunch of flowers that Sean threw away? So much for your beautiful symbol of parental connection? <sighs> That's got nothing to do with any of this. Ignore him, Sean. You threw those flowers away, that much is true. But the bond they represented remains as strong as it ever was. The president held on to them until the last, an act which provided us with our final piece of evidence. What? What are you talking about? The flowers Sean disposed of have been squashed flat. They, they must have been crushed by the balloon. If we examine the basket for traces of lion lily pollen, what do you think we might find? No! You don't need to do that! You looked over the basket just now! Anyway, if there was pollen stuck to it, you would have seen it! Those flowers are bright yellow! Objection. Not all evidence is visible to the naked eye, Mrs. Saint. Huh? Emma? Yeah? I'd like to call on your scientific skills once again, if you don't mind. Leave it to me! Alright, let's take a look at this balloon basket, shall we? Ah, I've got something! Bright yellow pollen, just like you said. If it's from the same flowers, it shouldn't take more than another quick test to prove it. Wh what? And there we have it. You murdered the president, and this murder you carried out yourself. No, I... how could this... No! You crushed the president with that balloon. Then you loaded his body into the basket and took him to the refrigeration unit. But why? Why go to the trouble of removing the body? Because he knew another incident was scheduled to occur that same evening. Oh, Rosie Ringer's murder! Exactly. If he had left the body there, it would have interfered with his other plans. I get it. And he couldn't leave the body in the refrigeration unit for too long either, right? Indeed not. So while returning to the big building to drop the body off again the following night, he must have observed the fire Sean caused and the Taurosaurus head falling as a result. That's what gave you the idea, wasn't it? To frame Sean for the murder? Enough! You made it seem as if the falling head was what killed him so that my son would take the blame. Despicable coward! In order to achieve your aim, you lowered the president's body from the balloon to the lot below. And while he was dangling from the rope you used, he was caught on Sean's rehearsal tape. N no! How did you... How did you see for it all? How? How? You manipulated people, and you manipulated this case, just as you manipulate animals on the stage. You thought you were all powerful, but your reign is at an end. The animals look like they're mad with you, Simeon. Even Money and Isaiah. They thought you were their friend, but you're not. They're sad and mad all at the same time. Stop it! Stop looking at me like that! <laughs> Perhaps they will when you finally stop clowning around. You're not cut out for comedy. Your tale is destined to end not with a bang, but with a whimper. I don't... Get away from me! Get away from me!
Leave! Leave me alone! Dad, where are you? I'm so, so scared! I don't know what you're talking about! I've done nothing wrong! Nothing! I'm not the bad one! They are! Why, Bronco? Why have you stopped me from going to see my dad? If only none of them did what they did, I wouldn't have had to! I couldn't trust the police! I couldn't trust anybody! I was all alone, with nobody to help me! But that man, he... he helped me! Canis was the only one who ever helped me! So what if I used people? I had to! Is that so wrong? No! Leave me alone! Leave me alone! Ow! That hurts! Stop it! You... No! No! It seems the game is up at last. Tequila! Mr. Edgeworth, may I be the first to congratulate you? You have unmasked the person behind this entire sorry affair. Now I am free to... <gasps> no! Guns are so clumsy, don't you find? I... I don't have a gun! Please, not only are you carrying one, you were just about to draw it. You must have stolen it from the president after murdering him. This gentleman betrayed a bond of trust. He knew the so-called president was an imposter, and yet he employed me to kill him nonetheless. There is nothing more dangerous for an assassin than to be lied to about the nature of one's target. If one does not know what cards one opponent is holding, one can be very unpleasantly surprised. <sighs> but that was not your true crime. No, thinking you could deceive me, manipulate me, that is the crime for which you are about to pay. No! You! It's been a while to kill her. Step aside, Canis. That man is my target. I would politely ask that you call off this particular job. He'll pay for his crimes, but in prison, not at the end of your blade. And if I refuse, let us just say that I might not take the loss of the one life that I ever saved too well. You, save a life? Bodhihama Kanis? The blind butcher himself? <laughs> Preposterous, I know. But yes, I who have taken so many lives once chose to preserve one. That of an innocent young pup. And he in his turn saved mine. Something of a bond formed between us. Laugh all you like. I know I would. But I would respectfully request that you spare him. As one professional to another, I ask that you let this particular target live. Very well. The boy must mean a lot to you. Thank you. I am in your debt. You need not thank me. I simply see little point in the two of us killing one another. Now then, I bid you all good day. No! Get back here! You have my thanks, Mr. Edgeworth. This young puff needed to be shown the error of his ways. And you have done just that. Alright, I suppose we'd better be getting back. Our ironclad enclosure awaits. Doesn't it, Helmut? Yes, yes it does. Hold it! Oh, hello. You. Killed my dad, didn't you, old man? I will not lie, I did. My victims deserve to be remembered at the very least. Ah, <laughs> uh, but I sense a great hatred for me from you, on horned pup. In that case... Ugh. Sean! No! You must not falter, little one. Here, you may use my knife. Take it, and cut my throat. One sure slice is all it takes. I was growing rather tired of carving my little statues anyway. 
I want revenge. I want it so badly. Sean, don't do it. Please, Sean, I beg of you. At least, I did until just now. I would have done anything to make you pay, no matter how long it took. Oh, but you should make those who have wronged you pay. It'll make you feel so good. Trust me. All the pain, all the suffering, it all goes away. It drowns it all out. Numbs it. Maybe it does. And listening to you, I thought maybe that's what I wanted. Sean! But it's not just about me. Say I get my revenge. How does that help anybody else? If I become a murderer, my mom suffers ten times more than I ever would. And so would all the people I work with. They're counting on me, and they worry about me. <laughs> Thoughtful words indeed, little one. Yeah? Well, I get it now. I won't ever forgive you, but I shouldn't be the one who has to punish you. That's what these guys are for. My mom, the prosecutor, people like that. Sean... Wow, you may be young, Sean, but you're way wiser than I'll ever be. You could at least consider trying to be better yourself, Kay. Very well. Then I suppose we'll be on our way. With me, young pup. On our way? To where? Where else? To the prison. Our home. Our home? And with that, the case came to an end. A case that had dragged so many people into its orbit. But as for me, there was one last thing I had to do. April 8th, 2.54 p.m. Committee for Prosecutorial Excellence, Chamber. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Edgeworth. What's the big idea, big guy? Want to tell us what we're doing here? Mr. Edgeworth. Your request has been processed and approved. Huh? You're what now? I have asked for my prosecutor's badge to be reinstated. Your badge? What is the meaning of this? I am returning it. From this day forth, I'm a prosecutor no longer. I still can't believe you did that for me. A great man once said that an attorney's job is to be a friend to the friendless and to trust his clients to show him the way to the truth. That man's image will be forever burned into my memory. My father in the courtroom fighting for those who could not fight for themselves. Good old Gregory. But that was his path. Your path. Mine lies elsewhere. Mr. Edgeworth. My path is that of the prosecutor. It always was. Well, then I guess that's that. I'm sorry. No, no. I dig it. And besides, I can tell by that look in your eye that your mind's made up. It is. Alright then. Looks like our work together is diddly done. Just don't come crying to old Eddie if you change your mind. This club's now closed to new members. I... I understand. Hey, Milestar. Care to tell me why, at least? How come you're so dead set on popping the old prosecutor's hat back on? You once asked me something, Fender. Are you going to keep fighting crime as a prosecutor? Or help people as an attorney? Something tells me you've got a big decision ahead of you. One only you can answer. I've been thinking about that question ever since. About how I mean to live my life. And now that this case is over, I think I finally know the answer. I'm going to help people as a prosecutor. But can't you also do that as an attorney? Look at it this way. Simeon Saint was also a victim of sorts. He lost his only parent all those years ago, and with him his ability to believe in a just world. I know how that feels. To lose somebody so important to you. To lose faith in everything. 
to doubt everything and be utterly alone, to fight and fight and fight. All that I can hope to do is get every defendant declared guilty, so I make that my policy. But I was lucky. Somebody was kind enough to save me from myself. OBJECTION! Mr. Saint had nobody. He had no faith in the law. He felt that seeking revenge himself was the only option. But I doubt even you imagined that the body double would ever go so far as to co-opt our country's police. No, 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 I sure didn't. And as long as Winter was around, no evidence was ever going to stand. He even nearly managed to ruin things this morning. Lagarde almost got away with it again. I want to help people like him. And how do you plan to do that? If he had been able to rely upon the law, none of this would have happened. Chairman Winner made a mockery of justice, and in so doing drove Mr. Saint away from seeking it. The law is only as good as its practitioners. It can be a shield that keeps the people safe from harm, or a sword wielded to wound them. Just one among many of the law's great contradictions. You can say that again. Yup. It's what we folks in the trade like to call a legal contradiction. The law is far from perfect. But one cannot solve such contradictions in the law without engaging with it. I don't think an attorney could have saved Mr. Saint. But a prosecutor? A custodian of the law? I think perhaps they could have. I plan to take up my badge again and confront those contradictions at every turn. Very Malzarino. I like it. You know, it won't be easy breezy though, right? Fighting the law itself? That's lawyering on hard mode. I understand that. But somebody has to do it. Oh, I don't doubt that. And if it has to be anybody, it should be you. Laws are like people, I guess. They both gotta grow and change. Adapt or perish, am I right? You're going to smash this? I just know it. After all, you're Gregory's boy through and through. And if there's one thing that man did not know how to do, is it's give up. Eyes on the prize and straight on till sunset. That was his motto. You know what? I saw that same determination on your face the second you mentioned taking up prosecuting again. You know what's really grown and changed? Hate to be a great big cheese ball, but you. I only wish your dad was here to see it. He'd be proud as all get out. Fender. Thank you. Well, Mr. Edgeworth, if you're ready to begin, we can get the ceremony underway. Please. By the power vested in me by the Committee for Prosecutorial Excellence, I, Verity Gavell, do hereby, in the sight of the Almighty Goddess, reinstate Miles Edgeworth as a servant of the law. All right! You're a prosecutor again! Best news I've heard all week, sir. Well, Mr. Prosecutor, I gotta scoot. Your pops is gonna want to know that his kid just signed up for the opposition a second time. <laughs> thank you again, Fender, for everything. Don't thank me yet. The next time you see me could be across a courtroom. And this face is a whole lot less roguishly charming when it's not on your side of the aisle. I would relish the opportunity to face an attorney trained by my father. I hope that day comes very soon. Alrighty, Fender out. Welcome back into the fold, Prosecutor Edgeworth. Thank you, Judge Cavell. I owe you more than I can say. You do? You strove to right the wrongs of the committee from the inside. That must have been a lonely battle indeed. Not at all. I was never truly alone. That's right! You have the goddess of justice on your side. Thank you for teaching me that it's possible to fight in such a way. The contradictions within the committee are like those within the legal system itself. If we aren't able to overcome them, the real truth will forever evade us. I have you to thank for teaching me that, and for setting me on this path. I hereby swear to confront the contradictions that afflict the law and to overcome them. And I thank you for your commitment to that cause as does the Almighty Goddess. I truly believe that such efforts are necessary in order for the law to grow and improve. 
I will look forward to seeing you in the courtroom again soon. As will I. You did not see the best of me when last I oversaw a trial. The next time will be different. I will show you what it means to serve justice with true impartiality. Judge Gavell, I don't mean to call your motivation into question. Yes, Mr. Edgeworth? But, to my mind, the ideal judge is not wholly impartial. The ideal judge is human. Even in the courtroom, they laugh, they cry, they rage, they smile. And then, when all is said and done, they pass down a judgment based in that very humanity. I'm not sure exactly how to put this, but perfection isn't always the loftiest of ideals, and it's certainly not the only thing to strive for. Forgive me. This is my opinion. Nothing more. You are right, of course. There are other ways. I thank you for sharing your insights. Mr. Edgeworth, there is another reason I was never truly alone during my long struggle against Chairman Winner. Someone else was with me. Someone other than the goddess. Of course! Sean! This clipping gave me more courage than words can express. Simply having it nearer give me, gave me hope. No matter how hard things get, no matter how formidable one's opponent, when we feel that we are not alone, we can keep going, no matter how hard the road ahead. Mistakes have been made, but we must fix them. For Sean's sake, more than anyone's. Like the mistakes made in the incident in which his father died. So you see, there is something more important even to me than the words of the goddess. <laughs> Though it may anger her to hear me say such things. <laughs> so that was your secret weapon all along. The strength of your bond with your son. Perhaps you are right. Perhaps I should not strive for an unachievable perfection. But I must grow. As a servant of the law and as a mother. That I believe above all else. I see. It seems that we both have plenty still to learn. Indeed. We are neither of us perfect yet. Let us continue along our chosen paths and continue to grow as we tread them until we meet again. I will look forward to that day. May the goddess watch over you as you embark upon the next step of your journey. Farewell, Verity Gavell. I lost the title of prosecutor, but now I have regained it, and in so doing I have seen a new way forward, a new path for justice, and I am determined to follow that path until it finally leads me to the truth. No matter how hard it might be, no matter how what obstacles may arise, won't be tied anybody. Ah, screw it, let's just say this! OBJECTION! And that, my friends, is Ace Attorney Investigations 2, Prosecutor's Gamut. The last 2D Ace Attorney to be exact. I never thought we'd see it live. So Chief, what kind of scoop we looking to land ourselves next, huh? Did I teach you nothing, knucklehead? We're journalists, dang it. Leads are our stock and trade, our bread and butter. You don't just hand that stuff over, not even to your dang apprentice. Sorry, Chief. Guess I still got a whole bunch to learn, huh? Well, all right then. Better go track down some leads my own self. That's the spirit. You go get him, champ. Uh, before you mosey on down the way, mind, uh, sharing what kind of leads them their leads might be? Huh? But, Chief, you... Come on now, I'm pretty much your editor, ain't I? Can't hold out on the boss. <sighs> Come on, Chief, that's cold. As I said, this is the last 2D Ace Attorney. Because two years later, Dual Destinies would come out, transitioning from 2D to 3D. This feels very bittersweet. <laughs> My arm wound has yet to fully heal, even now. The bodyguard who inflicted it was a skillful practitioner indeed. I shan't be forgetting him in a hurry. But never mind that now. Time to return to the life of a simple ice cream seller. Although I have been thinking that perhaps Krebs would be more my speed. Well, no rush. I'm sure there will be time to ponder the matter before my next job comes in. This felt like a goodbye to the 2D era of Ace Attorney as a whole. I'm sad that we never got this game when it came out in 2011. All because the first one didn't sell well. 
Sure, you might have knocked me on my butt, wise guy, but I ain't up for the count just yet. I'll be keeping my guard up and looking for an opening. We'll get out of this dump yet. Ain't that right, Teddy? The second the bell rings for the next round of escape shenanigans, we'll come out swinging. Till then, it's trading, trading, and more trading. The fact that Capcom actually gave us this is nothing short of a miracle. I even hinted at that much. And yet it turned out to be true. Hmm? You want to know if I'm still planning on becoming an animal stylist? Sure, I'm still studying every single day. Still up to my elbows in mud. But I guess it suits me better than being a newspaper salesman. I plan to make it my new career when I finally get out of here. What's that? Is my release a few more years away? Now because I helped Warden Lagarde? Why do you think I'm being so nice to these stupid freaking animals? I don't care about the freaking license. I just want to get out of here. Why me? You deserve it. Ironic that the first guy Phoenix Wright put away would end up staying there for a long time. <sighs> Can't help but be thankful all the same, you know? I really can. I was so shocked when I learned what Simeon had been up to this whole time. I trusted him. I was his boss. Still, can't sit around being sad forever, I guess. The show must go on. We can't let the magic department and the ventriloquy department get the better of us. We'll light up that stage and blow away the competition and all those awful memories with it. It's such a shame we never see her again after this. Hell, many of them don't. We don't see them again after this game. Because Dual Destinies takes things in a different direction. And I wonder how Connus is doing anyway. I must have gotten soft in my old age, haven't I, boy? Yes, yes I have. 18 years ago, I saved a life. And the troublesome child is still keeping me busy to this day. And now here we are, back in a cage. Well, we'll have company soon at least, won't we, boy? Yes, our friend the pup. Things certainly won't be dull with him around. No, no, they won't. This game is so important to the overall Ace Attorney lore that it ties everything together. And I do mean everything. What dessert shall we eat? Chocolate cake, sticky and sweet. Oh, so soft, fluffy and light. You'll be dreaming of it tonight. I'll always be waiting for you, Judy. And I'll come visit you every day just like you and Eddie did when I was in here. We have so much to thank him and Mr. Edgeworth for. Most of all, the fact that I get to eat your delicious desserts again, Samson. <laughs> and not just you. They gave me permission to keep providing sweet treats to everyone here. I guess spreading the gospel of candy making for all these years is finally paying off. At least there's a happy ending to it all. Wow, this game just... Looking back on it now, it just makes me happy I get to relive it again. First on the DS, now on the Switch. Oh, hello, sweeties. Fancy seeing you here. I owe you a great big thank you, you know. And dear old Greggy Pegleg, too, of course. After all, it's thanks to all of you that I can eat Sammy Poople's sweets again. I'm even thinking of making a lovely medicine out of them. I'm going to call it... Snacker's Delight. It makes your stomach so small you can only eat snacks. So you can get skinny as a ten peg and then love every minute. I'm gonna make a fortune. I swear, I thank Capcom for giving me this opportunity. For giving me the chance to experience this. Man, I've met so many beautiful people now and drawn so many beautiful sketches. Lulu isn't the biggest fan of my new work, though. She took one look at my sketchbook and hit me over the head with it. Bam! Just like that. And, uh, then she left. Guess that's one less beautiful person in my life now. So I've got a big decision ahead of me. Do I follow my art or follow my heart? Uh, by heart I mean new girlfriend. You got that right. Larry, you're such a dunce. It's no wonder your future don't get any better by the time Turnabout Time Traveler hits. At least closure comes all around. Badster, the Badinator. Seriously though, thanks for the assist today, good buddy. Pah. You want me to talk about IS-7? I'll talk all day. 
Sounds like that Edgeworth kid is doing good work. Yeah, Malzarino chose a different path from his old man in the end. A path that means we can't work together, but that won't stop me looking in on him from time to time. <laughs> You've come pretty far yourself. Holy macaroni! A compliment from Big Bad to Ted the Bad? Am I dreaming? Well, flattery will get you everywhere, old pal. You won't ever need a little Fender Magic, just say the word. Now all of us can play modern Ace Attorney on modern consoles. This just makes me happy. Looks like they'll be letting me off a little easier than I thought for what I did. I guess because I told them I was kind of forced to do it. Ouch! Ain't no such thing as easy when it comes to crime, dang fool child. Sorry, Grandma. I still feel awful about it, of course. But... I'm just so glad I get to stay out here with you. What's that? You think we should be getting back to work? <laughs> I guess you're right. Can't keep the dead waiting. Seriously, now you can play all the Ace Attorney games on modern hardware, and it makes me glad. Science saves the day again, huh? Good thing I happen to be around, right? Even if I do have to jump right back on a plane again and go back to Europe. <sighs> all this flying around is going to get tiring. <laughs> Still, it's all part of being a first-class forensic investigator. Guess I'd better get going. Whoa, but if you ever need me, just say the word, okay? I'll come running. You know I will. I know. We'll be seeing you again in Apollo Justice and in Spirit of Justice. But what we want is for you to come back in AA7. The greater one's father, the greater the pressure to be great. Okay. But Eustace Winner, was it? He has chosen his own path now and he will be tested. Yeah? Just as I was. Miles Edgeworth chose to live as a prosecutor over how his own father lived. That, too, is a valid answer to the question we've all had to wrestle with. My father hid a secret, bore a burden, I could only have imagined. I thought only of my family name, he thought of so much more. He thought of our entire nation. I mean, to carry on that legacy, to fulfill his last great wish. Even if our president was an imposter, even if the real president is long dead, even if it takes all my effort and all my men's effort, Shang Fa will rise again. I can't wait for you to see it. Sorry, it's just that I had a phone call while doing the credits. Jeez, what can you do? I gave up on the whole, the winner thing. Told everybody to stop calling me that. Because I didn't win. My dad did it all for me. I'm going to start again from scratch. I won't let what he did ruin everything. And pretty soon I'll be better than him. And better than Edgeworth. So watch out. Now first order of business. Get a new nickname. Just be yourself, Edgeworth. I mean, winner. That's all that matters. Seriously, that's all that really matters. Well, it was eventful to say the least, but we got it done. And the movie's going down great. I think the murder stories in the gossip magazines might have helped. Big Bad Man emerges from Big Bad Bowl, revealed the true face of the monster behind Zeng Fa President Murder Plot. Huh? Wait, this is a picture of you, Mr. Powers. What? But... Why? Hey, it's not so bad. After all, it'll make people come and see the movie, right? Uh, yeah, I guess. I'm thankful that's over and done with. Seriously. I very much enjoyed the movie, Sean. It's nothing. It wasn't even a big part. 
The boy who befriended both Taurosaurus and Gordy? They don't come any bigger than that. And it was a role you were born to play. You think? Well, it would be cool to be in the sequel, I guess. And I kind of like acting. Hey, can we pick something up before we head back? I wanted to get some lion lilies for my dad. Of course, and I will buy some too for Emily. Yeah, for Emily. Still can't believe it is finally over. April 8th, 4.17 p.m. Prosecutor's o Prosecutor Building. High Prosecutor's Office. Phew! It's been a busy few days, huh, sir? Unbelievably so. How did so many important cases all come along at once? There's never a dull moment when I'm around. Guess I'm just lucky that way. Wait, so all that stuff happened because of you? No, Gummy, how could you say that? And yet, I don't think the good detective is entirely wrong. Well, Kay, what now? Will you be returning to your thieving practice? Hmm, yeah, good question. What? You're not sure? Uh, how can I put this? I guess I feel like I've been trying to follow in my father's footsteps this whole time, you know? Trying to become a great thief just like he was. The Yadagarasu. Or a Yadagarasu, at least. But, watching how this all panned out for you, Mr. Edgeworth, it got me thinking that maybe I need to get out from under his shadow and live my own life, too. Just like how you decided not to do the whole attorney thing. It's time to make our own fate. She's right. After all, nothing thrives in the shade. I'm going to be my own hero. That sounds like an admirable plan indeed. I won't be giving up the name, though. Can't not be the Yadagarasu, right? Whatever name you pick, you'll always be K to us, K. And you'll always be a hero. Aw, thanks, Gummy. You'll always be my Gummy, too. You bet I will. And I'll be doing my detective thing just as hard as always. So I'll be counting on you, sir. Yes, and I'll be counting on you too, Detective. Be right back. I'm back, and for the last time, let's finish this. Just as I've been counting on you these last few days. You've helped us out too many times to mention. I think your next salary review may come as a pleasant surprise. Huh? Huh? Wait, you mean... What's the matter? I'm saying I'll see to it that you get paid a little more, Detective. You will? This is... unbelievable, sir! No way! Go Gummy! It's like a dream come true. I can finally leave the instant noodle life behind. But don't think I'll be letting you rest on your laurels. Your work won't be getting any easier. I hope you understand that. Yes, sir! Understood, sir! I'll give you everything I got, just you wait and see. Fender and Judge Gavell set me on a new path in life. A path on which I will face down every contradiction that the law has to present. A path at whose end lies the ultimate truth. But can I really do this? I'll need to give it some serious thought. It certainly won't be easy. Nonetheless... Mr. Edgeworth, there is another reason I was never truly alone during my long struggle against Chairman Winner. Someone else was with me. Someone other than the goddess. Of course. Sean! This clipping gave me more courage than words can express. Simply having it near gave me hope. When we feel that we are not alone, we can keep going, no matter how hard the road ahead. Huh. <laughs> so that was your secret weapon all along. The strength of your bond with your son. The strength of my bonds. Oh, I almost forgot. What? What is it? I was trying to find other members for my Yadagarasu team, right? I do vaguely remember something about that. I never even found a single one. We were going to be unstoppable in our quest to steal the truth. So much for that little pipe dream. You're kidding, right? You already have a team. A team that can solve any case the world cares to throw at. Huh? Yeah, I guess I do. The prosecutor? The detective, and the great thief. Between the three of us, we can hunt down the truth, put it in handcuffs, and steal it once and for all. I can't help feeling a little sorry for the truth in that case. As long as the three of us stick together, we got nothing to fear. 
Right, Mr. Edgeworth? Indeed, nothing at all. My father followed his own path, right to the end. And now I follow a path of my own making, too. But not alone. I have some colorful companions to help me. As long as they're beside me, I won't lose my way. It's a new path, and a new me. And I'll be walking it as a prosecutor, not an attorney. My father's path and mine are different. But they're not as separate as they may seem. Though the routes differ, the destination is the same. Because, of course, both end at the truth. And just like that, Prosecutor's Gambit is over. We're finally done. Thank God. It's done! Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, please be sure to hit the like button. It means a lot. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and click the bell, and I'll catch you on the flip side. If I ever do return to Ace Attorney, I will be doing the original trilogy, as well as the great Ace Attorney Chronicles with commentary. Because I have to. Anyway, that's it. This is Mega Man NG signing off. Peace out. See you next time. And thank you. Product provided, once again, by Capcom.